come through. If you need to stop smoking, drinking, fornicating, who does it come through? If you need provision in your life financially, who does it come through? If you need God's power, is he will save, heal, delivered, who does it come through? The Holy Ghost. As we go to 1 Corinthians 6, Ephesians, the 2 verse 18 says, Through him, through Christ, we have access to the Father by one spirit. The Holy Ghost takes you to Jesus, and Jesus takes you to the Father. Did you see how it works? Yeah. 1 Corinthians 6, look at verse 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is what? One, one spirit. It's one spirit. When you do what we talked about, repent. When you turn from your thinking, your feeling, your living, and turn to Jesus, the Savior of the world who died and rose. Now, when you surrender your life to him, you are saved. And there comes a spiritual marriage. You and Christ become one through the Holy Ghost. The Word of God declares the word joined means glue. It's the same word that is used in Matthew 19, verse 5, when Christ says, Whatsoever God hath joined together, a man and a wife, let not man put asunder. Do you understand? You're glued spirit to spirit. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 declares, I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Understand, you are a spirit. Say, I am a spirit. I am a spirit. Genesis 1.26 says, God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. John 4.24, Jesus said, God is a what? Spirit. And those that worship him shall worship him in spirit and in truth. So you are a spirit. You have a soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. What you think with, how you feel, and the choices you make. But the body is only the outside part of you. Same way we're in this building, worshiping Jesus, hearing his word. We are not the building. The building is an external covering around us, is it not? Yes. That's, That's right. all your body is. It's a covering from the outside of forces around you. Does that make sense? Amen. But you are the spirit man. You're just like God inside. And when you repent and believe, you become one with God, the Holy Ghost. And in that relationship, he already has in him being God Everything you can ever need for eternity. Do you understand? Amen. Now, your whole life and how much you are conformed to Christ and how holy you live and how much power you have, how much love, how much of strength of character, how much of his provision, how much of his anointing to set others free is based on how you interact with the Holy Ghost. Do you understand? Do you understand today? Your joint women, you are one spirit. Go with me now, if you will to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 1. Romans 1. But hold your place in Romans. Go with me to 1 Corinthians 12 first. 1 Corinthians 12 will tell us something we need to do and look at before we go to Romans. How many of you are understanding so far? Raise your hand. How many of you have already spoken something to your heart? Raise your hand so far. He's already speaking to us. That's his job. First Corinthians 12, we ask, unless you're recording, right now we have uh, some of the churches that we oversee on the world have asked to me to be on Facebook Live, so we're recording that in addition to the, we're going back on TV soon. Um, but if, unless you're record, you've been delegated to record, please have all cell phones off so we aren't distracted from the Word of God. Amen? Yeah. Praise the Lord. And every time we come to church, have the cell phones off so we can hear one voice, the Holy Ghost. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. First Corinthians chapter 12, that was at verse 4. We understand the Godhead because the Godhead is that by which we have the divine power of God, the Holy Ghost, who gives us all things. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 4 says, There are no diversities of gifts, but, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. 6. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. To profit with all. What's saying in a nutshell is uh, from verse 5 to 7 uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is the one who administrates or manages the offices in the body of Christ in the earth. Ephesians 4 7 through 12, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And it goes on. So we all come in the unity of faith, God and the Son of God. So Christ is the one who directs, he's directing this church right now. He's directing the Lord's operations in countries, 12 countries around the world right now. 
It's Jesus by the Holy Ghost who's doing this, giving the message right now to saints around the world and the message of repentance and salvation to sinners around the world. Do you understand? Amen. The Father, we see it says in a, a, a verse 6, there are diversity of operations, but there's the same God which works with all in all. It's in the Father's the one who directs the operations, the plan of God. Operations means plan. We see John 3, 16. For God, the Father, so loved the world that he did what? Gave. Gave his only begotten Son, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So the Father is the one that set the directive. The Father was the one with the plan to send Jesus Christ, his Son, to be born of a virgin, live without sin, show himself and his divinity through signs and wonders and great infallible proofs, die and rise, return back to heaven, and send the Holy Ghost for mankind's redemption. Does that make sense? Amen. Say the Father plans everything. The Father, the Christ the planet. Son performs everything. Christ the Son performs everything. But now in verse 7, what the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to prop with all. The manifestation of the Spirit is his presentation of the Father's plan and the Son's performance on the cross in your life. Do you understand? Yes. Amen. A good analogy that we oftentimes use is in a restaurant. You have the owner who has the plan. This is going to be a raw food restaurant. This is going to be a seafood restaurant. This is going to be a Thai cuisine, Chinese cuisine, Indian food, a Caribbean food, African food. This is going to be a, a restaurant according to my plan in my heart, my mind. That's like the Father said in Christ, his plan. Then there's a cook who is given a menu, and the cook cooks up, based on the ingredients in the menu, cooks up the dishes. He's there in the back. You, know, so you might see him for a little while, he might come out and greet you, but he goes in the back and there he's working. That's like Christ, the Son, who worked on the cross. He was in heaven, the Word, who made all things. You see John 1, 1, 1, 14, 1, 17. But he came to earth for a brief time, 33 years to greet mankind, to die man for mankind, to rise for mankind, to return to heaven, that he might redeem mankind by his blood. Do you understand? But then, the one that you deal with the most, Usually you don't see the owner of the restaurant at all. Usually you might see the cook briefly, but it's the waiter that you have all your dealings with. He's the one that takes what the owner plans and what the cook prepares. He goes and he presents it to you. That's the Holy Ghost job. When Amen. he comes in your life, he will glorify Christ, John 16, 13 through 16. He'll show you that Jesus is the way to your salvation, to your healing, to your deliverance, to your provision, to you being empowered, to you taking the world for Jesus. Do you understand? Amen. He will bring the word of God to your remembrance, John 14, 6, 26. Amen. He will teach you all things in the word of God in life, John 14, 26. If you're in sin, he will reprove you of righteousness and of judgment, John 16, 8. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And he will show you things to come, yeah. John 16, 15. And that Christ says, all things the Father hath are mine, and all things that are mine I give unto the Holy Ghost to show to you. Do you understand? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So the Holy Ghost comes alongside us to give us the character and salvation of Jesus. Say the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Comes with me. Comes with me. To give me the salvation. To give me the salvation. And character. And character. Of Jesus. Of Jesus. But now Jesus says something else marvelous. He says in John 14, verse 15. If you love me, verse 15, keep my commandments. And I will pray to the Father. And he will give you another comforter. That he may abide with you. With you. Say with me. With me. Abide with me forever. Go down and say, even the spirit of truth. And he says, whom the world cannot receive, because it knoweth him not, nor seeth him. But you know him, for he is with you, dwelleth with you, and shall be what? In, In you. So the Holy Ghost comes with us at salvation to show us the kingdom of God. To show us all things that pertain to life and godliness. To show us all things we need now and for eternity. Say, the Holy Ghost comes with me. The Holy Ghost comes with to me. To show me the kingdom of God. To show me the kingdom to of show God. all the Father's plan. And all the Father has planned. All that Jesus performed in the cross. All that Jesus performed in the cross. Through his presentation. Through his presentation. According to the word of God. According to the word of God. Say, the Holy Ghost comes in me. To express, to express the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, and all I need, and all I need in my present life, in my present day, as long as I walk with Jesus, as I walk with Jesus. Hallelujah.
How many of you understand that? So you see, we have the Holy Ghost with us, what you're saying. He's showing you all things that pertain to life and godliness. He's showing you you can have salvation. He's showing you you can have healing. He's showing you you can be delivered. Yeah. He's showing you you can live free from yeah. sin and holy in Christ. Yeah. He's showing you you can prosper. Yeah. He's showing you you can walk in love and anointing and power yes. and victory all the time yes. and give that victory to everyone you encounter. And he you and in you. He not only shows you, he gives it to you. He makes you saved. He makes you healed. He makes you walk in his deliverance as you believe it by faith and act out in obedience. Does this make sense? Amen. 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 So now what we need to learn is how to interact with the Holy Ghost that all the Father has planned and all the Son performed might be in our lives as much as it was and is in the life of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Go with me now to Romans 1. Romans 1. Let's see what this divine power will produce in our lives. Let's see from the scriptures. Again, Christ's vision for his church. Now look at all things the Lord has for us are in the Holy Ghost. Okay, it's in the Holy Ghost. It's in the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you go to Romans 1, I'll say briefly, there are three positions that you see of the Holy Ghost in relation to people. First of all, when people are unsaved, He's there with them, John 16, 7 through 11, reproving them of sin and the right of righteousness and of judgment. Christ says, because of sin because they believe not in me, of righteousness because I go to my Father, you see me no more, and of judgment because the prince of this world, the people are following when they're in sin, the devil is judged. Okay. So first he's with you, convicting you. But you turn your back to him, you're far from him. Then when you choose to repent and turn back to Christ, now he comes with you. Okay? There's no sin separating anymore. He comes, he's with you, and then he's showing you the kingdom. But now he comes upon, the third of the spirit, he comes upon you, and he fills you, and in the same way, first when you repent, you say, God, I've sinned, I turn from sin, I turn from Satan, I turn from self, and the secular world around me, I change my mind and my life, I turn to Jesus. He's, I believe you're the son of God. God man of the flesh, you died, you rose to save me. Now I ask you to save me, cleanse me, oh, redeem me, reconcile me to the Father, make me born again, make me new. I'm dead to sin, I'm alive in you. Amen. You confess now words from your mouth that you want to be saved and live a holy life in this world. Amen. And the Holy Ghost, you come with him. When he comes in you, he's coming to bring all things that pertain to life of godliness. He's coming to bring, Hebrews 6 says, the powers of the world to come. And the powers of the world to come cannot be expressed adequately in any English or any other tangible language. But he comes in, and the first sign that he comes in, and say with the first sign is when you... Romans 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, God has raised from the dead, you shall be saved. You confess now, Father, filled with the Holy Ghost. And the first thing you speak out now is the heavenly language showing there's a heavenly power that now has filled your life, you understand. Yeah. And speaking in other tongues, speaking in other tongues is so important because it opens the door to God's supernatural life. It opens the door to all things that pertain unto life and godliness to experience by you and through you Amen. by the world. Do you Praise understand? the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you aren't filled with the Holy Ghost and you've never spoken in tongues, today is your day in Jesus' name. Amen. That will release the power of God in your life to destroy all the works of the enemy and erect the kingdom of God. Do you understand? Amen. Romans 1. Let's see what the divine power will do for you. Remember, the divine power of God is who? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. God, the Holy Ghost. Romans 1, look at verse 16. Let's see some of the scriptures now in the script in the Bible. Now with the knowledge of who the power of God is referring to. Romans 1, 16 declares this. Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the what? Power of God. It is the what? Power of God. It is the what? Power of God. Power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Amen. So we see the power of God is the Holy Ghost. So the gospel is what the Holy Ghost uses to manifest salvation in your life. Do you understand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Turn to Zechariah 7. Zechariah 7. Zechariah 7. To explain this a little more. If you go to Matthew, the first book of the New Testament, go to the left. Malachi, one book to the left, one more book to the left. Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 7. Zechariah 7. Lord God, who's understanding so far? Raise your hand. Make sure. 
We're all on the same page. We're all moving at the same speed. What speed is that? Holy Ghost speed. Hallelujah. Zechariah chapter 7. Look at verse 12. It's the old covenant before Christ came. But watch the operation of the Spirit. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God the Father the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God the Holy Ghost the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen? Amen. John 7, 12 reads as follows. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law. And the words, say the words. The words. Which the Lord of hosts hath sent in his who? Spirit. Hath sent in his who? Spirit. Sent in his who? Spirit. Sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath of the Lord of hosts. Amen. The principle here is that God sends his word into your heart. God has his word of salvation, of repentance, of deliverance, of healing, of prosperity, of holiness, of anointing, of taking the word for Jesus by his spirit. It's only by the agency of the Holy Ghost that anything the Father has planned and anything that Christ performed will be experienced in your life. Do you understand? So we see it's by the Holy Ghost. And that word that now, since Christ has died and risen, that comes into our life, that changes us, is the gospel. The good news of who Jesus Christ is. The good news of what Jesus Christ did, that he is God, a man of us in the flesh, born in a virgin. He virgin. He lived a life without sin. He showed his divinity, as he said before, through his preaching and teaching and Amen. miracles, Amen. healings, deliverance. My God, he gave his life on the cruel cross of Calvary. He shed his sinner's blood for every sin, every sickness, Amen. every iniquity Amen. you ever experienced Amen. to wash you clean, to redeem you, to cleanse you, to heal you, to deliver you, to make you new, to conform you to him. But he didn't just die on the third day. He rose from the dead. Hallelujah. Having spoiled principalities and powers, making a show of them openly through his cross. Colossians 2.15. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. And then he went to the Father said, Father, those saints on earth, your children on earth, they need another comforter. Father, I'm here back at your right hand, and I ever live to make intercession for them. But Father, I'm asking you'll send your precious spirit. And he sent the Holy Ghost. And the first believers were in uh, the upper room on the day of Pentecost. And they had repented and put faith in Christ. And the Holy Ghost came as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the place where they were sitting. And there came clover like tongues, like a fire sitting upon them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues. And the Spirit of God gave them utterance. And they wrapped these rolls up and preached the gospel. And 3,000 souls are saved. So will the Holy Ghost transform your life as you repent, believe. Surrender to Christ and start to interact with him. He is the power behind the gospel. It's not just the life of Jesus and the words. The Holy Ghost makes his death and resurrection real to you. Now it's not just a theory, not just a doctrine, not just philosophy or theology. Now it's experience, it's life. It becomes you, a new creature in him. Do you understand? Amen. Him living his life through you by the Holy Ghost. But I'm on the gospel. Is what the Holy Ghost uses to bring the power of God into your life. No matter what you face today, the power of God by the Holy Ghost yeah. will set you yeah. free yeah. in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Yeah. Say yeah. hallelujah! Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it will. Hallelujah! His power is greater. Uh -huh. Go with me now to Luke 5. Luke 5. Christ's vision for his church. Complete victory. Amen. Complete dominion. Amen. My God, world conquest, world takeover to glorify the king of all the earth, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Beautiful. Glory to God forever. Love it. Amen. Luke chapter 5. <clears throat> Verse 17. Word of God declares... And it came to pass, on a certain day, as he was teaching, 
And there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the what? Power. And the what? Power. Oh, one more time. And the what? Power. The power of the Lord was present to do what? Heal. To heal them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the power of the Lord is present to do Whatever you need healing of, do you understand? Amen. A doctor might have said you have cancer. Well, Jesus Christ says you have healing Amen. through the Holy Ghost. The doctor might have diagnosed diabetes or schizophrenia, or congenitive heart disease, or arthritis, or scoliosis, or muscular dystrophy. But Christ died and rose, and with his Christ, you are healed as you act as the Holy Ghost. You understand? Amen. Remember, you are a spirit being, and the Holy Ghost gives you all things that pertain to life and godliness in the spirit. But watch this. Go with me now to Isaiah 12. We access the divine power. How do you need something from God today? Raise your hand. Amen. Oh, glory to God. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. You know why he's going to do it? Because he already did it. Through Christ died on the cross and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. With you. I'm about to come in you and manifest it. Isaiah chapter 1. You go to Psalms, which is the longest and most popular book of the Bible. In the, Isaiah 12. Psalms in there. Go to Psalms. Most popular and longest book of the Bible. And come to the right, Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, then Isaiah. Isaiah, chapter 12. <laughs> Isaiah, chapter 12, is where we'll read. And this is very important. We're looking at. All things in the kingdom of God are already given us by the Holy Ghost. Everything you need is already <coughs> given to you. Now it's the key of just drawing it out. Where do we draw it out from? Watch. Isaiah 12, uh, verse 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength. And my song. Verse 3. Therefore, with what? Joy. With what? Joy. With what? Joy. With joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. Amen. In salvation, the Father is poured into you water. Jesus said in John 7. Turn with me into John 7. John chapter 7. Now, in Ephesians 5, 26, the scripture declares that they are sanctified with washing of water by the word. So the, the water is emblematic or symbolic of the word of God. Water is symbolic of the word of God. Amen. Now, Luke chapter, I'm sorry, John chapter 7. Jesus said, John 53, now you're clean to the word. I spoke unto you. So the water of God cleans you. The word of God cleans you. Cleans our conscience. Cleans our mind. Cleans us spiritually, socially, and physically. Cleans our life in every area of existence. Do you understand? Well, there is an application and an applicator of the water. It's the way the water reaches us to clean us. Some power, some scrubby power. that are able the water to cleanse us of anger any infirmity, any demonic holes, then we need to know the power behind the water being sponged on us. Amen. John, uh, I'm sorry, John, yeah, John 7. See, I need the applicator. I need the applicator. To apply the water to my life. To apply the water to my life. John chapter 7. Hold your place. Go to John 4 first. John 4. John chapter 4. Verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, 
if thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that speaketh, that saith to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living what? Water. Living what? Water. What kind of water? Water. water? Living water. Water that's alive. How can water be alive? Well, there's one way. John 7 now. It's the water the Father has for you through the Son. The water of salvation. The water of your healing. The water of your deliverance. The water of your prosperity. The water of uh, the anointing of God upon you to destroy yokes everywhere you go. And take the world for Jesus. The water that's alive. John 7. May you get this water today. It will produce all that you need in your life. John 7, verse 37. I will begin reading. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Yeah. Verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, where the well is, the belly of the Bible says in the book of Proverbs 20, 27, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord illuminating even the innermost parts of the belly. It's talking about your spirit. Out of your spirit. Out of your spirit. Out of your spirit, something shall come. Are you hearing me say? Say, out of my spirit. Something will come forth. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of what? Living water. Rivers of what? Living water. Not just now little uh, little droplets from a ladle. And you're talking about John 4, Jacob's well. The place they called Sychar. Now you're talking about rivers. Nile rivers. Hallelujah, you understand? Mississippi rivers. Rivers. Of living water. But what was he talking about? Verse 39. But this spake he of what? The Spirit. The Spirit. This spake he of what? The Spirit. This spake he of who? The Spirit. So the Holy Ghost will come like a river out of your belly. Come like a river out of your spirit. And that river According to Ezekiel 47 1, that river will, will heal everything it touches. It gave life to everything it touched. So the Holy Ghost come out of If you will be filled in and let him come out of your life, out of your mouth, out of your actions, he will heal, he will bless, he will save, he will prosper, he will cleanse, make holy, he'll empower everything in your life. If you'll learn to interact with him, do you understand? Amen. Goes on. This spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. Now watch. That's telling us when one believes in Christ, you don't receive the force of the Spirit then. He's with you, but he shall be what? In you. He comes with you to give you the character of Jesus. He comes in you to give you the power of Jesus. Which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. But now he is glorified. He's Amen. been crucified, he's been resurrected. He's returned to the Father, and he's poured out the Spirit. And if we repent, believe, and then after we believe, ask the Father to fill us with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, then those rivers inside will start to flow, start to bubble. And the result will be salvation and holiness and healing and deliverance. How? As you speak in an unknown tongue. You say, why don't I tell you? Because it requires greater faith than to speak in your mother tongue. It requires faith and reliance on the Lord to do something in you. But Acts 5.32 says, Whereof we are as witnesses, and so also is the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to all them that obey him. Say, I must obey the Lord. Yeah, I must believe Jesus. I must obey Jesus. Then the Holy Ghost will fill me. And the Holy Ghost will fill me. speak out. Amen. In other tongues. In other tongues. Amen. Amen. Go with me now, if you would, to the book of Acts. 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 Chapter 2. See the lives of the disciples. Be 
Peter said in Acts 10 44, For of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted of him. The Father, Christ the Son, the Holy Ghost, loves not one person in the kingdom of God more than another person. That's right. If you're saved, if you're born again, you're all his children. But now he has another blessing to come upon us. And we'll see it in just a moment. Hold your place there in Acts and go with me to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. If you're unfamiliar with the Bible, there's a table of comment. If not, from Acts, go to Ephesians, go to the right, Romans. One more book, 1 Corinthians. One book, 2 Corinthians, then Galatians, then Ephesians. 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 A couple more things. The power of God, we see he was there, the Holy Ghost, to save. The power of God will save me. Say, the Holy Ghost will save me. The Holy Ghost will save me through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost will heal me. The Holy Ghost will heal me through the blood of Jesus Christ. And watch how it will come after salvation. Acts, I'm sorry, Ephesians 1, 13. The word of God says, In whom, referring to Christ, in verse 12, In whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after, say after. After. After that you believed, that you, you believed. were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory. This scripture tells us, once we trust Christ, once we believe, we are saved. But now the Father's plan is, after, say after. After. After you're saved, there comes another step in your growth and development. And that is you are sealed with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Sealed. You are sealed with him. Amen. He's with you, but now he comes in you. When he comes in you, he seals you off completely from sin. Amen. He seals you from sickness. He seals you from Satan as you stay and abide in him by faith and obedience, you understand. Amen. There comes a power now when he comes inside that you don't yet have when he's out. A power enough to strengthen you in salvation, in holiness, in healing, in deliverance, in all the kingdom of God. Because he's put it inside you now. It's in you more than your heart, your lungs, your breath. Because it's in your spirit, the real you. He is to bring it forth. We saw Isaiah 12, 3. With, with joy, we draw water, living water, of the well of salvation. The relationship with the Holy Ghost in our spirit. Do you understand? It says, after we believe, we receive the Holy Spirit of promise. 14, the earnest of our inheritance. The word earnest means the receipt. When you make a purchase, uh, a purchase, uh, let's say a credit card purchase, something that's going to have to be shipped to you in a week, they might give you a receipt, an email receipt. They might uh, send one to you. Uh, but then you have the receipt to prove that you can possess what is coming. Amen. The Holy Ghost... All Hebrews 6 says, he is a taste, a foretaste, a receipt, an advance notice that you can receive the kingdom that's coming. And you are, you are a citizen, and you can exercise the powers of the kingdom right now. Amen. Amen. It's the powers of the world to come. You can have that in your life. And no devil, no sin, no sickness can stand up to the power of the Holy Ghost in you as you yield to him. Alcohol must bow to God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Ghost through your life. Amen. Amen. Cigarettes must bow and be cast out through the power of God. Amen. Anything not of God is destroyed under the power of the Holy Ghost. Do you understand? Amen. Acts 2. We quoted earlier. Look at what occurred in the life of the first disciples. Acts 2. A couple more scriptures and we're seeing them bring this to a close. How do you want the power of the Holy Ghost in your life? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Say, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Fill me. Fill me. Father, fill me. With your Holy Ghost. With the initial evidence of speaking in tongues. And may your power. And may your power. 
work through me. You're living to me. All things pertaining to life and godliness. In Jesus' name. I'll speak out by faith. I'll speak out by faith. And be filled. Amen. Amen. Acts 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all of one accord in one place. We must be in one accord. The Lord with each other. For the power of the Holy Ghost to manifest. Two. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with who? The Holy Ghost. The Holy they, were Ghost. All yeah. they were all filled, each one. Yeah. In the first church, there, was no, there were no believers in Christ who were not filled with the Holy Ghost. That's right. That's right. All men had the Holy Ghost with them, and all of them had the Holy Spirit come upon and in them. Yes. Jesus said in Acts 1 8, and, But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. You shall be witness unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. That means the whole church was filled with power. Yes. Power over sin, power over sickness, power over Satan, power over the secular world that tried to persecute them and stamp out the name of Jesus. Yes. And they turned the world upside down through the power of the Holy Ghost. And through the Holy Ghost's power, we're going to turn this world upside down for Christ. Let's do Hallelujah. it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You're all the Holy Ghost. And began to do what? Began to speak. They began to do what? Speak. Began to speak with what? Other tongues. With other tongues. Tongues in the Greek glossolalia means languages. So now when they were filled with this divine person of the Holy Ghost, they now start to have divine abilities by the Holy Ghost. They could speak language they did not learn mentally. Right. They could speak words of the gospel they did not Learned because Acts 4 3 says they were unlearned and ignorant men, but the Pharisees took knowledge that they had been with Jesus. They could do things they could not do before. Peter, we see him raising the dead, <laughs> healing the sick. Acts 3, Acts 9. Paul, raising the dead, healing the sick. The divine person of us can do divine power, divine ability. Seek him today to be filled. We pray, speak out, trust him. Yes. Be filled. Yes. Have his power work in your life and set you free today. Yes, yes. They, uh, they, they began to speak with other, other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So now they were yielding to the Holy Ghost their whole <laughs> life in a way they had not yet. Yes. yes. That's what he's calling us to. Yield your life to Jesus yes. today. Yield your life to the Father today. Yield your entire existence to God the Holy Ghost today. <laughs> He'll set you free. Yeah. He will put in your life that which you've been lacking. Some of you is love. You've been lacking. The love of God shed upon our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us, Romans 5 5. Right. Yeah. Some of it's peace, but peace is manifest for the Holy Ghost. Kingdom of God is not righteous or uh, meat or drink, but righteous joy and peace in the Holy Ghost, Romans 14 17. Yeah. Some of it's holiness. Well, he's the spirit of holiness. The book of Romans, verse 1 through 4. So he'll give you whatever you need as you yield to him. They spoke in tongues. Verse 14 says, Peter stood up and preached the gospel. Verse 37 uh, through 41, 3,000 souls were saved. Go with me to Acts chapter 10 now. Acts 10. A picture of what the Lord has for you is the, in, in, with his divine divine power. So listen, not one of the early Christians was not filled with the Holy Ghost, and not one of the early Christians did not speak in unknown tongues. There are 120 there. Acts 2, 42 says they continued in the steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and prayers and fellowship and breaking of bread. The apostles' doctrine was repent, be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift is unto you. A part of the apostles' doctrine they continued it. So it's 12, uh, 120 were saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Spoken tongues. Then 3,000 more, 3,120, saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. And all of the body was saved, filled, uh, speaking in tongues, walking in the power of the Holy Ghost, having all things that pertain to life and godliness, and no devil, no sin, no sickness had any part of their life. Amen. Glory to God, that's what the Lord's vision for you. Complete victory, dominion to give to others. Amen. Acts 10. 
4. While Peter yet spake these words, now Peter was filled in Acts 2. Look what happens when the Holy Ghost goes through him. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Verse 6. For they heard them speak with what? Tongues. First of all, they heard them do what? Speak. 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 So can you be filled with the Holy Ghost without speaking? No. Can you be saved without speaking? No. You see, the Holy Ghost being filled with him is the next step after salvation. Through when you fill with him, he unlocks all you've received in salvation. He unlocks the power of salvation. Power to live a holy life, free from all sin in Christ. The power to be healed, to withstand by faith every disease, every infirmity that tries to encroach or come upon you. To stand against every devil, every figure of every devil that tries to oppress you. Amen. He unlocks it. My yes. God, the death of your salvation, when you're filled with him, when you trust him and speak out to Hallelujah! Hallelujah. In Thank unknown you, tongue, in heavenly tongue, he releases heavenly power into your existence. Amen. Well, they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. So when you speak in tongues, what are you doing? Magnifying God. Magnifying God. Praise the Lord. You're glorifying him and lifting him up, praising him in a way greater than intellectually you can do and I've unlearned and can understand. I tell you, so powerful because now the Holy Ghost is praying through you the mysteries, the, the intellect, the knowledge, the wisdom, the power of heaven into you and through you and other people. Yeah. That's why we saw so many salvations, healing, deliverances, dead, untimely un dead, raised because the Holy Ghost was in charge. Amen. As He's in charge here, He's going to use it to take this world for Jesus. Yes, amen. Let Him be in charge in your life. When sin comes, Pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let him be in charge of your life. When sickness tries to come, pray in tongues, my God. Amen. The person you're not filled, ask him to fill you. In order to be filled, you must be completely obeying him. Amen. In order for a cup to be completely filled, it must be first be completely empty. Yeah. If you have some dirt in the cup, you must get rid of the dirt yeah. that the water can fill it. In order, in order for the Holy Ghost to feel the cup of your life, you must get rid of all the dirt of sin, all the dirt of unbelief, all the dirt of, all the dirt of iniquity. You must be all the dirt of self. Get free from it. And he can fill you with his power, his holiness, his wisdom, his love, his divinity. By him, you are partaker of the divine nature. You heard them speak in tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter and called him to be baptized. Ephesians, I'm sorry, Acts 19 now, we'll close on this. If you can't say, respond to the word. The first step of the apostles preaching the doctrine, it was the doctrine of Jesus, John 7, 16, 17, was repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The first step is repent, we'll give a call to repentance in just a moment, putting faith in Jesus. And then on the 28th, if Jesus tarries, we are having a water baptism uh, ceremony. You can join us for that. Join us every service, but you can also come back specifically to be baptized. Then we're going to baptize you at that time. Acts 19, verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, verse 2, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. We're going to pause there. Acts 19 1 calls these people disciples. Uh -huh. Not just casual believers, right. but disciplined followers of the risen Messiah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeah. So they had repented. They had put faith in Christ. They had been saved. They were believing. They were obeying. But still, they were not complete in their walk with God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was something that, and to that point they still lacked. Yes. And Paul introduced the next step in their Christian walk, and they had not even heard such a thing existed. They knew of the Holy Ghost with them to save them in the character of Christ. They didn't know yet of the Holy Ghost upon them, in them, to give them the power of Jesus. To manifest all things pertaining to life and godliness from Jesus. Verse 3. And he said to them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. For then to Jesus, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. Amen. Five. 
When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of Jesus. That's water baptism. Watch. Verse 6. And when Paul laid his hands upon them, the who? The Holy Ghost. The who? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost came on them. We see in John 14, 16, 17, he's with you. Then Christ says to you, when he comes upon you, you receive power. Power of salvation, power of healing, power of deliverance, power of prosperity. All the power of God, all the kingdom of God comes through the agency and interaction with God the Holy Ghost. Amen. He presents what the Father has planned and the Son has performed on the cross. When Paul had his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they did what? <laughs> and they spake. If you feel that I am, you have to speak. That's your act of faith, which brings his divine visitation of grace. Amen. Speaking. You must speak to repent. You must speak to be saved. You must speak to be healed. You must speak to deliver. You must speak to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. They speak with tongues and prophesy. It's going to happen to some of you. You're going to speak in tongues and prophesy in here. Amen. Luke 11 is where we'll stop. Luke 11 now. How many of you are still with us? How many still understand it? How many are ready to receive the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. How many want God's power in your life? Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, he's available for you even today. Luke 11. Verse 13. Luke 11, 13. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, If you then, being evil, Know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall our Heavenly Father give who? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit to them that do what? Ask. Ask Him. So to have all things that pertain to life and godliness manifest, walking in your life, what do you have to do? Ask. Ask. To be saved, what do you have to do? Ask. Ask. To be healed, what do you have to do? Ask. Deliver, what do you have to do? Ask. Be filled with what you have to do. Ask, believe, speak, obey, and the power. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Let's thank Him right now for His Word. Let's close our eyes. No looking around. I encourage you. Besides those who are silent. Oh, let's worship the Lord. I got to thank Him for His Word. Thank Him. Praise your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Salvation and Bless your name, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your life, your death, your resurrection. Bless your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for who you are, what you've done in our lives. Oh, and you're here to fill each one. To manage yourself, Lord, each one. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus
Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Lifted as we examine our hearts. If you're here and we've heard uh, Christ's very